did this person come on the national scene? I vaguely remember when she was AG in California and people were paying some attention to her. She was like diverse. She was back then this sort of law and order person, you know, she was considered tough on crime. And before he knew it, she was vice president. So just take us through a little bit of her, her background, how she became this political star. Yeah, you know, a, a, a big part of it is her relationship with Willie Brown. She doesn't like to talk about it, but it very much kicked off her political career, sort of put her on the path to show up and demand from these progressive Democrats, I deserve the, a place on the stage, elect me and I'll put you, and I you know, deserve to be your leader. And so a lot of people saw that. And obviously with the advance of Obama, you had a lot of national Democrats looking for the next Obama. And that's kind of how she broke onto the national scene as attorney general of California. People started talking about her as the next Obama. You know, it, it's she was almost insulted by it a little bit. She's like, I'd rather be known as the Kamala Harris. But that's how sort of the national media and the national donors kind of were first introduced to her. OK, so talk about that relationship and how that came about. The relationship with Willie Brown, absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, she had a choice. You, you can date the most powerful, you can date the most powerful person in California politics for a certain amount of time, and then you'll be r rapidly successful. So she made that choice. She dated him for about a year when he was running for mayor. And through that process, she was introduced to the entire um, three-pronged control of California. You know, the biggest mm -hmm. businessmen, the biggest stars, the biggest donors, especially in San Francisco. And that sort of launched her social career, you know, if we can call it a career, social and political career. The two go hand in hand so well in California. And when she first decided to run for district attorney of San Francisco, she kind of, she already had a leg up. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so she was smart in getting, I mean, literally in bed with someone in a position of power who could power broker her way around San Francisco and introduce her to all the right people. And she was beloved because even then in progressive circles, you somehow get extra points as a human being if you are black and of Indian descent as she is. So, you know, you're somehow worth more in their eyes because this is the new racist attitude on the left. It, human beings have varying values based solely on skin color or ethnicity. And so she fell into the right boxes for those people. And she'd been raised by some radical leftists, Marxists even. So um, her, her policies were spot on for these folks too. Yeah, absolutely. She was, you know, her parents were, you know, she likes to talk about how she grew up in the civil rights movement with her parents marching and shouting for justice. But in all honesty, her parents were academics. They were more focused on the ideas of politics and they were members of the Afro-American club in Berkeley. And they, you know, did all have a, had all these meetings and talked about Marxist ideals and, and people that they admired were definitely on the Marxist side of things. Her father was described as a Marxist professor in, in Stanford. And so she definitely had the sort of intellectual underpinnings but when she got to start campaigning, she almost ran as a centrist. There was already a radical progressive prosecutor, Terrence Holland on in San Francisco, who was, who was really sort of the anti-Rudy Giuliani. He was very progressive. And Kamala Harris kind of showed up and campaigned to the right of him a little bit. You know, her famous thing was, it's not about being soft on crime or hard on crime. It's about being smart on crime. So that's kind of her way of selling her little more centrist position as she first ran for office in front of, a, you know, the San Francisco elite. So it was to the point you point out in the book, like she, she started off kind of tough on crime and to the point where you know, she gets elected, but then she, she's not going for the death penalty in the murder of young cops. And it was so bad that Dianne Feinstein was completely opposite her. So was, Feinstein was what, the mayor of San Francisco and was Kamala the DA or the AG at the time? Yeah, she was the the DA of San Francisco. And during the funeral for this police officer that was shot and killed, you know, Kamala had already made a statement that she was not going to 
you know, prosecute that you're not going to seek the death penalty in this case, which really angered San Francisco police officers, you know, her, the police officer's mother later told, you know, she made that decision before my son was even in, in the ground. So, you know, you know, you had the situation where at the funeral, you had San Francisco police officers turning their backs to her and Feinstein stood up and was, and specifically, you know, pointed out that that's, this is the reason why the death penalty exists. So it really took a kind of a shot at, at Kamala and she did it for political reasons, but it was really a rare moment of political courage for Kamala Harris. And she was definitely a little more cautious about taking hard stances on these issues than subsequent. Mm -hmm. And then of course, when she ran for president, she tried to totally disavow any times she was tough on crime and embrace the softer version of herself because this is in a different era where we had different priorities and it was 2020 and so on. True or false, using your tax refund to pay off credit card debt is smart. False. Donewithdebt.com published a strategy designed to let you keep your hard-earned tax refund and reduce or eliminate credit card debt. Doesn't that sound better? Most Americans owe thousands in credit card debt. That'll take years to pay off. Been there, if you ever do it. Done with debt found that filing bankruptcy is usually not the answer and taking out loans to pay off those credit cards usually increases debt. When you engage done with debt, their legal experts and skilled negotiators take on the credit card companies for you. Their winning strategies are designed with one goal, solve your debt situation quickly and permanently. First things first though, chat with a done with debt strategist and explore your solutions. Some debt fighting strategies are time sensitive, so you're gonna need to move quickly on this one. For a free consultation, visit donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.